Welcome to the Non-Community Water System Approval Module 1 Tutorial for Approval of a Groundwater Source. This tutorial is intended for either of the following two situations. First, you need a water source to conduct business, but you do not have a water supply well currently available. Secondly, you have an existing well with the required documentation, which includes a well log that was created by the well driller when the well was originally constructed, or the water well completion report. We'll go into more details on all of the documentation later in this tutorial. If you have an existing well available, but you do not have this documentation, please see Module 1 Tutorial B. A new water source is a source of public water supply that is not covered by a valid DEP issued permit or approval. A new water source for a non-community public water system must be from a groundwater well. Dug wells, horizontal wells, springs, and surface water are not acceptable sources of water for the non-community water system application. Also, remember that only systems with a well requiring nothing more than simple disinfection can use this approval process. There are three goals of Module 1, all of which are important for public health protection. The first goal is to ensure that the well is drilled by a Pennsylvania licensed well driller and that it is constructed in a manner that prevents contamination from the surface or shallow subsurface. The second goal is to evaluate the well yield and demonstrate that the well can meet the system demand. The third goal is to evaluate the water quality conditions and verify that the source is of high quality. This graphic displays the generalized procedure for the Module 1 application package when a new well needs to be drilled. Take note that the applicant should plan for a relatively lengthy process, perhaps weeks to months, that includes coordinating with DEP staff, contracting a Pennsylvania licensed well driller, drilling and testing the well, and compiling and submitting the necessary modules of the non-community water system approval package. We'll go through each step in this tutorial. Now, if you have an existing well with documentation that you plan to submit for approval, please continue with the tutorial and you will learn about the forms and data sheets that are required for your application. First, the applicant should contact their local safe drinking water program and schedule a pre-application meeting. If you do not know your local contact, you can use the DEP website office locations link in the video description. During the pre-application meeting, the applicant will have the ability to ask DEP questions about the approval process for a water supply well, and DEP staff can provide a comprehensive overview of the process. In addition, the applicant can schedule a site survey with DEP staff to discuss ideal locations for where to drill the water supply well. For example, the well must be drilled far enough away from any potential sources of contamination to minimize the risk of contaminated water reaching the well. The required distance between the well and a potential source of contamination is called the setback distance, and there are different required distances depending on the potential source of contamination. The second step is for the applicant to secure a Pennsylvania licensed well driller. The applicant should notify all potential drillers that their project is for a public water supply source and that DEP forms regarding well drilling activities are required. The Pennsylvania Geological Survey maintains a searchable database of licensed water well drillers including contact information organized by county. The database is also sortable according to the services offered by the licensed well driller. The project applicant should also make sure that their contracted well driller has a copy of Module 1 prior to drilling the well. If you have an existing well with proper documentation, you should contact the original well driller that drilled the well and relay the information that needs to be completed in the Module 1 application. We will review this information in the coming steps. The third step is for the well driller to drill and construct the well. The driller is required to contact the Pennsylvania Geological Survey with a notice of intention to drill. The driller or the applicant on behalf of the driller should contact DEP staff at the same time. The licensed driller then drills and constructs the well according to the construction standards 
In the Public Water Supply Manual, Part 4, Non-Community System Design Standards, which are summarized in Module 1. The well driller is required by the Pennsylvania Water Well Drillers License Act, which is Act 610, to complete a water well completion report. Many drillers submit this report electronically, but as the applicant, you should be sure to receive a copy of the completion report to include in your application. The applicant should also ensure that the well driller completes the well construction demonstration data sheet for new wells in Module 1 of the Non-Community Application Package. If you have an existing well, the original well drilling contractor needs to complete this form for your application. The form and well construction sketch provide information necessary for the DEP review staff to assess if the well is constructed to standards and in a manner that is protective of public health. Specifically, the form asks for details on the following well construction features. Well construction measurements of total well depth, casing and grout depth, depth to pump intake, static water level, and depth to screen or open interval. Well capping, well casing, grout, drive shoe and screen, pitless adapter, discharge line, pump, and whether the well was properly developed and disinfected, and any bacteria or turbidity issues. After the well is drilled and properly developed, the fourth step is to confirm that the well produces enough water to meet system demand and that the water is of high quality. This is achieved by conducting a short duration constant rate pumping test. Ideally, the pumping test should be conducted by the driller shortly after the well is constructed. The applicant should make sure that their contracted pumping test operator has a copy of Module 1 prior to initiating the pumping test. The pumping test operator should perform the test in accordance with the pumping test demonstration data sheets instructions and complete the data sheets found in the Module 1 application on pages 7 through 12. It is important to note that prior to the pumping test, the project applicant must coordinate with a DEP accredited lab regarding water quality samples that are collected toward the end of the pumping test. Samples should be collected in laboratory issued bottleware and they are typically collected by the well driller, the laboratory, or the project applicant. The project applicant must make sure that the laboratory analyzes the samples for the correct parameters, which depends on if your system is classified as a transient or a non-transient system. Details on the applicable new source sampling requirements are provided in the Public Water Supply Manual, Part 4, Non-Community System Design Standards. The applicant should request that the pumping test operator provides a copy of the completed data sheets to them along with any field notes and additional information that may have been generated during the test. The contracted well driller should also complete the well risk assessment form found on page 13 of the Module 1 application. The form consists of a list of questions regarding well construction, well location, and aquifer characteristics. The department uses this form, along with other information provided in Module 1, to determine if the well source is susceptible to surface water contamination. The final piece of Module 1 that we have yet to cover takes us back to pages 1 and 2 of the module. This first part of Module 1 includes a series of yes-no questions related to the well. The applicant or the contracted well driller for the new well can complete this part of the module. If you are applying for approval of an existing well, you must also complete this part of the module and you will most likely need assistance from the original well driller. The questions are general in nature, but very important because it provides DEP the ability to quickly assess the application package and determine if everything is provided to be able to approve the well for operation. The yes-no questions fall under five broad categories. General information, well location questions, Questions pertaining to well construction, source quantity, and source water quality questions. If a no response is marked, it does not mean automatically that the well cannot be approved. Rather, when a no response is marked, additional details on why the answer to the question is no are requested. There are also questions with only a yes option. You have to be able to answer yes to these questions for approval of the proposed well. 
Now the applicant can compile all the Module 1 required forms and data sheets. These include Module 1, Sections A through E, pages 1 and 2 of the application, Well Construction Demonstration Data Sheet for New Wells, which also requires a copy of the Driller's Water Well Completion Report, Pumping Test Demonstration Data Sheets, and the Well Risk Assessment Form. Remember, Module 1 is only one component of the non-community water system application package. You'll need to compile the entire package, including the application, Module 1, and any other relevant modules. Please view the other tutorials on this channel for more information on the process and the other modules.